Hi, my name is Dan Cromer, and I'm a program manager for Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing how to configure clients to connect to multiple environments um, of a Dynamics AX installation. So here's an example of when we might have a single client that would want to connect to multiple environments. Um, in this example, I'm going to have two different installed environments. I'm going to have a database, which has an AOS pointing to it, for my development environment. And I'm going to have another AOS and another database for my test environment. However, on my machine, I can only have a single client installed. And so this brings up the need for me to be able to select which environment I want to connect to. I might want to connect first to my, using the Dynamics AX configuration utility, I'm going to be able to connect either to my development environment or to my test environment. Now another reason that we might want to be wanting to change our client configuration might be that we want to change some settings in our production environment. And in this particular situation, we would want to use the Dynamics AX configuration utility to actually change the configuration for our client um, in this production scenario. When it comes to managing configurations, there's two different ways that the Microsoft Dynamics AX configuration utility actually saves its configurations. The first option is saving the configuration in the registry. Now this is the default setting for when the client is installed and as it's in the registry, it's going to be stored on every computer individually. Now this means that if you are managing multiple client installations across an enterprise, you would have to actually manage that configuration across every one of those computers. Now to change which configuration is the active one, you would use the configuration utility again. The other option for managing configurations is using a configuration file, and these are suffixed .axc files. Now one of the advantages of these files is that they can actually be stored and managed centrally. So instead of having to store my configuration on every computer in the registry, I could have my configuration file sitting on a central domain file share and every one of my clients pointing to that central config file. And this makes management of my configurations a lot easier to do. These configuration files are generated using the configuration utility I, we're going to take a look at how to do that um, really quickly here. So now that we've covered why we want to actually manage multiple configurations and our different options for doing so, we're going to actually do a, do a demonstration of how this works. We're going to first use the uh, registry settings to switch between two environments, and then we're going to be exporting configurations to a configuration file and showing how we can launch the client by using these configuration files directly. So let's take a look at how that goes. All right, so I'm here on my development machine. And on this machine, I actually have two environments installed. As you can see here, I have both a dev and a test database. And in my services control panel here, you can see that I have AOS is installed for both my dev and my test environment. Now I installed my dev environment first. And as such, that was going to be created as my original configuration when I installed the client. So what I'm going to do is launch the client here and just show you that I'm connecting to my development environment. <clears throat> there you go. You can see that I'm connected to the uh, VM1. That was my developer environment. And I have my initialized system here. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing is actually showing how to create a new configuration so that we can connect to our test environment as well. And that's pretty easy to do. What we'll do to do that is we're going to open up the Dynamics AX 2012 configuration program. So we'll just go ahead and launch this. And this requires elevation in order to run. And you can see here that our configuration utility is launched. So before we go ahead and get started, let's just take a look at some of the important controls here. Um, some things that we're really going to be concerned with in this particular exercise is going to be the stuff in the connection tab right here. And this connection tab is actually what defines which AOS instance we're going to connect to. Um, there's definitely some other tabs here for doing development and performance settings, but we're not going to be concerned with those for this particular exercise. 
So in order to create a new configuration, we'll click on the Manage button, and then we're going to create a new configuration. Okay, our new configuration is going to be called the test, the test configuration. And I'm going to copy it from my active configuration, which happens to be my original configuration. So I'll click OK. And the first thing that I will do is I will delete this AOS because I do not want to connect to my development environment. Instead, what I'm going to do is switch to my new TCP IP port settings, 27, 13, and 8102. I know these off the top of my head because I'm very good at what I do. So these are the port settings for my test environment. And when I click OK, that AOS is going to actually be added here. And that's as easy as it is. We'll click Apply. And what we've done now is you can see that we have our original configuration, which is for our development environment, as well as our test configuration. So my test configuration is currently my active configuration. We will launch the client. And as you can see, we're connected to our test environment. And to make things super clear, I actually haven't initialized my test environment yet. So you can see that this is a completely different system. All right. So that is pretty cool. That's how we actually can change our configurations. Now the next thing we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to actually export our configurations to configuration files and then show how we can launch the client through a configuration file as opposed to using the registry um, configurations. Okay, so to save some time, I have actually gone ahead and explicitly created a configuration for my dev environment and I still have the one for my test environment. So you can see here my test, and here's my dev. Now one more thing that I've done is I've actually on the general tab here to make sure it's really clear which environment I'm connecting to, I've added a string to this startup message field, and it says you are in the dev environment. And when I go to my test configuration, it says you're in the test environment. So depending on which environment I launch, it's going to actually tell me uh, with a little message there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to actually export my developer configuration to a file. So to do that, I'm going to go down here and click Manage and Save Configuration as File. Okay. And I'll save this to the desktop. And I'm going to save it as Dev Environment as my file name. So I'll save that there. And you can see that that is saved. And I will do the exact same thing with my test configuration. Okay, so I'm going to go to my test and save configuration as file and call this test environment. Okay, and as you can see, I now have configuration files for my dev and my test environment. So the way that we can make the client launch using a configuration file is by specifying the location of a configuration file as, an, as a command line argument to the Dynamics AX 2012 client. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to figure out the path to this configuration file for my dev environment. I'm going to copy it. And then in my shortcut here, I'm going to go to the properties, and you can see here is the location of my executable. So what I'll do is I'll add the location of this configuration file as an argument. Okay, and I will save that, and then I'm actually going to rename this to say that this is my dev environment. Now. I will make a copy of this shortcut and paste it, edit the properties, and I'm going to have this one point to my test environment. 
and save it. And we're going to rename this guy. Test. Okay. So I'm going to close the configuration utility now because I don't need it anymore. As you can see, I'm going to click on the dev environment here. And you can see here's my startup message. You're in the dev environment. And it's going to bring up uh, everything that we expected back when I was in that dev environment. Now when I close the client, and I can launch it back into test now by clicking on the test shortcut. You're in the test chart environment. And as you can see, we're back to everything that we saw in the test environment. So that's how easy it is to actually create and use configuration files. And you can see how configuration files can really help save time during development when you want to be able to connect to multiple environments. Now what's even cooler about configuration files is that I could take this configuration file for one of my environments and I could actually copy this onto a central file share in my, in my enterprise. And I could have every single client in my entire organization launching using a single config file. Now what that enables me to do is instead of having to manage my configurations across every single one of my client machines, I could manage it in a single location. And if I wanted to, say, perform maintenance on my machine and really ensure that no users can connect to the system, I could even lock that file down and prevent read access. So there's a lot of really cool tools that we can use right out of the Windows Administrator toolbox, not even related to Dynamics AX, to really do some robust management of our uh, Dynamics AX 2012 environment. So this concludes the video today. I hope you learned a lot, and happy systems management.